Next message. video while I put the bed back together so that's what I'm about to do and enjoy all right so let's get started first things first I am originally from Fort Worth Texas um, most of you heard of Fort Worth if you heard of Dallas they next door neighbors basically so just think of dallas and then split dallas in half and that's basically fort worth it's more country um i personally would not move back to fort worth unless i just absolutely had to in a sense but i don't see why i would have to but 100 percent, like if you're looking for a place to start a family if you're looking for a place to honestly start a business, like, granted, I wouldn't want to move back there, but business-wise, if someone was to be like, bitch, you, you need to go open a business here, blah, 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 I would do it. Just for the sake of, um, the city is constantly growing, and because it's constantly growing, um, anybody bringing something new um from the city instantly okay that was right it just looked it wrong um instantly you may just be a success just off the base of the fact that fourth war and the surrounding areas stay about <laughs> five six years behind houston so yeah you do the math on that she but yeah so i moved to houston as a kid um before I moved to Houston, I lived with my dad for a little bit, and that's where I experienced my first trauma with him. That's why I honestly, that's where I lost my love and my, my respect for my father is when I lived with him as a little kid and he put his hands on me. So, yes. Um, I was born with one kidney um we did not know i was born with one kidney until we moved to houston and maybe like a good year or two in my mama noticed that um i was developing pubic hair and she was like bitch you're not supposed to be having this and i think about this constantly because as a kid, I was like, yeah, I'm supposed to have this. And as I think about what I said and the fact that my mother did not even click that somebody may have touched me, bewilders me because, like, that was a true tell sign. And I think about that. That's something that I think about that it's like my mama has no problem assuming I'm having sex, but as a kid who verbally said I basically was touched out loud without even snitching. Yeah, you didn't even catch on to that. So, um, in the midst, so, <laughs> in the midst of, um, us finding out why I had puberty, 
that's where we found out that I was actually born with one kidney when they was doing an ultrasound on my stomach area to figure out what is actually going on with my pubic hair. So later on in life, we figured out that it was precocious puberty, and basically, precocious puberty is basically when your body develops faster than it should have been. So if my mom would have never caught that, when she caught that, nine times out of ten, I probably would have started my cycle in elementary versus in middle school when I was supposed to. So I was on shots for a long freaking time. So um. That's kind of where I develop my, I don't have a fear of needles because I'll get a tattoo, but that is where I did develop my fear of needles because literally I think I was getting a shot once a month and I dreaded those shots. Like I was getting in my leg and literally for damn near a whole week, like my, I still can feel how stiff my leg felt and how I really could not walk because my my whole thigh area was in pain so um that's precocious puberty basically I, and it may be different now hopefully it is because them shots ain't no joke so yeah i was born with one kid's warning the sorry about that um noise in the background he waits till i want to record to co ham and come in here with his stuff so hopefully i can steer clear of that so let's get back to where we was um i started doing hair when i was literally a freaking child i was six seven maybe even eight years old when i started braiding this little girl's hair and literally the only reason why i started to braid her hair is because she was the most adorable child and her mother never had her hair done. And me personally, like, the one thing about my mama is she never, ever, 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 hey, come on now, ever leaves the house without making sure our hair is done. So to see this beautiful little girl be so cute, so adorable, like a little doll, I'm like, oh, no, I cannot have you walking around looking like Kusha John. So literally, I started braiding her hair. And, like, her mother was appreciative very much to the point where it was a thing. It was a requirement, like that became literally my task as a child was to keep her hair maintained and braided and i did that so yes i've been doing hair for a very freaking long time so as a child one of the hobbies that i picked up was the piano I played the piano, I think, for three years, and I hate to say this verbally out loud on camera like this, but I do blame my dad for basically steering me clear of continuing playing the piano. And I say that because, like, my grandmother, everybody knows she's a very competitive person. She likes to be number one. She likes to gamble, like everybody knew that. And just to hear him speak so negative, negatively of my grandma like that, I was like, no, I can't have her looking like that. And I don't know if it was on purpose or not, but like, I do blame my dad for me stop playing the piano, but 100%, my number one goal in life is to get back into playing the piano because, like, that was something I wanted to do. I chose to do, like, I literally, like, my Aunt Dorothy's house, she had one of them church pianos, not even the regular piano, but the, the other special, like, uh, piano, I forgot what it's called. So she had that, and like literally, I've always had the Lean On Me song stuck in my head since a child. So I always had the first little few chords of that song stuck in my head. So I'm just playing that, and I can't get the rest. And that's how I am with a lot of things. And so literally, I'm just like, let me just freestyle this shit. Like, let me just, literally, I just said, let me play with the keys. And, um... 
the thing about that was I didn't know I was creating music until my family came running into the room telling me that that was beautiful. And like to this day, I'm still mad that they interrupted me the way that they interrupted me because if they would have never stopped me the way they stopped me, I probably would have, I would never have known what my next, he would have been type of thing so that's literally how i started playing the piano um so moving to houston um i ended up being hey come on now you do this every time before i was rudely interrupted by the dog going ham so Unfortunately, the reason why most of you Negroes think I'm a hoe is because, unfortunately, I was raised around strippers as a child. So, that 100% is a part of my upbringing. And, um, I am very thankful and happy that I was introduced into that environment only for the simple matter of fact of the fact that, A, my own mother really thinks that I would allow her to pimp me out. That's number one. Number two, I physically have seen what that lifestyle does to people firsthand and reading books. And yeah, I decided as a child I didn't want to be a stripper. And even as a teenager and young adults reading those books that I read, yeah, I said I do not want to step foot into a strip club and be a stripper. And 100%, like, I ain't even gonna lie. If that is something I feel deep down in my gut I should do, I would fucking do it and say fuck everybody, honestly. Like, <laughs> hands down. But I don't want to do that because I'm not trying to fight niggas off of me every night because of a performance because 100% I'm a perfectionist and the thing about these strippers nowadays is y'all don't even strip like literally y'all just shake your ass and you expect niggas to throw money at you and I'm sorry I grew up around strippers who literally practice in their fucking room and put on performances that's the stripper that I'm used to. And that's with me not even never not once stepping foot into a strip club as a child to see the performances. But I know these things because A, I've heard um, one of the strippers that we lived with, I heard her in her room practicing for her show. Um, I've heard my mother literally, you know, giving her her props for <coughs> being... Like, the Lisa Ray, the Players Club, Lisa Ray, literally, that is her bad bitch energy. Like, literally, like, just me hearing the stories from my own mom. Like, that's the type of stripping that if I was a fucking nigga, that's what I want to see. I don't want to see you just shaking your ass. Like, okay, bitch. That's what the club is fucking for. <laughs> but, yeah, like, I'm used to strippers, so... Any misconception about me, there's your fucking answer to why you feel this way towards me. So we can nip that shit in the bud right there. And I wasn't even expecting to nip that shit type of thing in the bud. So what I did wrong. So with that being said, I felt the ninth grade. I felt the ninth grade by one class, by one fucking point. So before... Anybody thinks anything negatively about me, like, I was pissed. I wasn't even pissed at the teacher for not giving me that one point. Even though in my head, I said that bitch now she could have gave me one point. But the type of teacher she was, she was a total complete bitch. And honestly, I didn't learn shit in her class. So for me to actually fail by one point and me getting into that class and knowing that she's not going to teach me anything yeah I did not I I don't hold myself accountable for that because I knew it as soon as I stepped foot in that class I knew I was going to feel it and sure enough I fucking felt it but the icing on the cake is is by the grace of God 
we had summer school and in summer school i was fucking number one in the motherfucking class so at the end of the freaking day i actually wow and i just i just thought about this in this moment at the end of the day i actually improved that grade by going to summer school and like that was literally my do-over because the same teacher they took me from in the fucking first place was the same teacher I had in summer school. So the whole fact that I fucking aced that shit with the teacher that I knew I was going to learn from compared to the teacher that I knew I wasn't going to learn from inst instantly. I can tell this confidently because at the end of the day, I'm still a smart ass bitch. Like, I was still very in the top percentage of my class. So, yeah, bitch. <laughs> I wasn't the top five, and I'm okay with that because, bitch, I was top. I was in the top 20, and I wasn't even a low number. So, bitch, So. <laughs> With that being said, I've had pictures in the MFA, the Museum of Fine Arts, here in Houston. Um, the Iron Third War exhibit. Yeah, bitch. Not only I did I there. have one pictures in the museum, I technically in total had three pictures in the freaking museum exhibits. Um, my first year I had two pictures and then my last year, my, basically my senior year, I had one picture and then along with, um, that in itself, um, when we moved to our second house, one of our neighbors actually was in the same photography program and she invited my sister and I to her exhibit when she had her picture in the museum. And I remember being a child, and I even said this when we had to speak at our first um, exhibit, but as a kid, I always known I was going to go to Yates. Like, as soon as I found out that both my grandparents went to Yates, um... I already knew and I was excited to go to Yates so to hear that this was at Yates and this is something that I could do I was like I'm gonna do that and I did that and so yeah that's one reason why no matter what nobody says to me no matter how somebody treats me I'm gonna keep chasing my dreams because as a fucking child I said I was gonna do something and in my teenage years I accomplished exactly what I said beyond what the fuck I even wish because I just wanted one picture but I got three and then not even that I have one picture that was in a competition and I actually won second fucking place and it's funny because I had a friend on my birthday say being number two is not all that and I'm like well I don't even do it to be number one I do it to do it to because I'm it's fun type of shit and this is exactly my prime example of why I do it because I like to do it and not because I'm trying to be number one because a hundred percent I'm number two yes but one and two and nine times out of ten that means I'm so close to being number one so yeah and I might actually even show you um that picture if I remember to um, show it because out of my whole portfolio that's the only thing I was able to keep thinking of Yates um I graduated from Yates I went to Turner Elementary when I was a child and I went to Ryan Middle School um and the one thing about me graduating from Yates that I'm always so proud of the fact is not just my grandparents but later on in life I did find out that my aunt Reen who um when I was born I thought was my mother because my mother was in the hospital she actually used to babysit Felicia Rashad so I didn't know much about her then 
as I do a little bit now, but to know like this is a black person that is on TV and is on a very successful TV show, like that in itself spoke volumes to me to the point where I became even prouder that I came from Yates because in so little words, I come from a school where that's not the only, just the only great person that's accomplished something that's come from me. So I most definitely hold a lot of pride that I graduated from Yates, mainly because of my grandparents. And like, that's where my grandparents love and all that shit floors. So like, I wanted all of that fucking energy, even as a child. So yeah and with all of that being said i am certified in microsoft but unfortunately i never could get a job so that's how i ended up in the grocery store and because i ended up in the grocery store and i always was doing something with food i ended up getting um certified in food service now i don't know if it's still good or if i can renew it or what but 100 percent, i keep it it's somewhere in this house for the simple matter of fact that if i gotta return i want to get a good paying position number two and number one <laughs> um If I do anything with my own business, business-wise, I want to already have, like, that step just already checked off the list. So, I keep that just for the simple matter of fact, like, I never know what life will bring me, but this may come in handy in the future. Because even with me, like, I don't really even want a salon no more, but even with me having my own salon, like, I'm like my mom. Like, I'm baking me cookies and cakes, and, like, if I'm baking this shit in this moment when I actually want it, why not try to sell the rest that I know I shouldn't be eating anyway? So, if I have... if. If that's something that I'm going to do, because, like, with me being by myself, um, there's just so many things that I can do differently that nobody else does. And, like, I just want to have all my ducks in a row versus having to deal with bullshit. So, yeah. I was certified in food service-ish. I forgot exactly what it's called. But, um, on to... My very last job that I quit, and that was being my mother's provider. I've been my mother's provider since I was 18 years old. And that's a long time to be taking care of grown adults who treat you wrong. And I was my mother's provider for about 14 years. So, when you do that man, and then you listen to how she says, I am, math ain't math enough. Because for someone who is so abusive and mean and rude, like, why the hell did you keep me as your provider for 14 fucking years? Like, that's one thing I have to keep reminding myself is, ain't nobody gonna keep you around that long. If you were really, really this bad of a person. But I was only a bad person because they couldn't control my money. So, that's all that is right there. So, and then my first snoop. My first internship was actually with the housing authority. Um, which... They most definitely, where I live, offered so many great things to us for better opportunities. I must admit that, honestly. So, yeah. That was my first job, working at the Housing Authority. And when I say the Housing Authority, I'm talking about Maine. Um, it's not even there no more, but I think it's um, San Felipe. It was over there somewhere around the West Timer area. So that's exactly where I was working in both of those buildings. Um, I attempted to be one of them 
people who walk door to door and try to get you to sign up for like AT&T and shit like that. Yeah, I did that for a little bit. I did not do that long at all. Those that right there is one of those jobs I was like, "Mm mm-mm. You got to you I don't even know if I lasted the month, honestly, but I was like, this shit ain't for me. Absolutely not. Um so nosy some little nosy tea. I've only had three boyfriends. I've had a boyfriend in high school. And I had a boyfriend out of high school, maybe like 1920-ish. And then I had a boyfriend in basically young my young 20s to like 25, 26, maybe 27. I really didn't keep up with my age like that. But I do feel like I either turned 21 right as I got with him or probably right after I met him. So that's how that's I know I was that young when I got with him. Um and yeah. Um I got nothing really bad to say about any of my exes if we want to be for true. Um I've been doing my hair since I was in 5th grade. I <laughs> I fired my mother when I was in elementary, no, not fifth grade. Nah, I've been doing my hair way before fifth grade. But I've been doing my hair since I was a child, basically. Um, I fired my mother when she fucked my shit up. And I was like, oh, hell nah. Because I was fighting her tooth and nail not to do what she did to my hair. And for you to do that, I'm your mother. You got to do what I say until you turn 18. And for it to not work out, mm -mm. that's not what's up. So, that's how I ended up doing my hair. I started taking over doing my hair. I did not reveal my hair until I got into, like, middle school. And I think I was, like, maybe seventh grade. Like, I didn't do it until I got comfortable. So, yeah, I'm about to do something differently because this is not working. Okay, so it took me a minute because I forgot I nigger rigged my bed the last time. So I need to put another nail in that one. But yeah, this for my own sake now at this point because I'm not trying to have this issue when I put it back together. And hopefully I have better needles. So yeah, had to nigger rig it real quick. So I'm about to put another needle here, about the place. This all around the wall, and then back to business. Okay, so I know I was using these last time to hold the bed up, so I'm gonna put these in whatever holes they can fit in. So, where did I leave off at? Okay, so once <coughs> my mama messed up my hair, I did not reveal my hair until middle school. And I think I was like in seventh grade. Um, I kept my hair in braids from elementary all the way to middle school. And then finally one day I was taking out my braids and I was looking at my hair and I'm like, this bitch kind of looking kind of cute. And then, yeah, that was that. And then... I haven't revealed my hair again since my last relationship. So, yeah. Um, I started playing with extensions in high school because um, my hair has always been thin. And, like, now I know why it was thinner then. But I started experimenting with extensions. And literally, I would just add, like, a track or two to my hair to make it look fuller and thicker. And... That's how I, you know, made my hair, you know, look just a little bit fuller than what it was. But the thing about that is glue never worked in my head. Like my scalp, my hair is so thin. Oh, okay. My hair is so thin that my scalp gets oily fast. So putting any glue on my scalp in general, bitch, she gone just melt right on off. So I've always experimented with sew-ins and um, making wigs and um, all of that. 
because glue just never was my friend to date to this day glue is not my friend um i actually went natural on accident um literally by the time i was in my 20s i was just making my little wigs and that's what i was doing i was back to basically my hair growth journey growing it and yeah um after so long i'm like i don't need a perm anymore so i stopped giving myself a perm and then when i started exploring things on youtube on like how to grow the hair thicker fuller and all that stuff that's when i realized like i'm a part of the natural girl journey and didn't even know it so yeah i was natural way before it was like popular and stuff like that um i started making my wigs more seriously around my 20s um i literally i prayed for closure and literally god literally put it straight in my lap and ever since i discovered closures it's been a wrap and i've been a wig girl every fucking since because that's always been that one thing that i wish for was like man i just need this one little piece that i can use just to make it look like i have you know and here we go closures so I've been doing closures from the fucking beginning. So, and I was sewing it on, not gluing it, none of that. So, my ultimate goal for myself is to get back to what I was doing back in the motherfucking day and just literally just doing my sewings. Like, I was literally braiding my hair, sewing my tracks in my hair myself, and putting my closure on myself. And that shit was laid. So, yes. <laughs> um let's see let's see um okay so this is a confession i've never said to anybody out loud but yes it took me a long time to get over my ex but not because i loved him like oh i can't live without him type of stuff but more so on for the for like me to get the type for me to get a man who is a man that i want and he ain't no man but <laughs> for me to get somebody that is my type that i want a hundred percent like that is what i couldn't let go of is the fact that I know I can get what I want type of stuff. So when I say it took me a while to get over my ex, I don't mean like completely mentally. I mean more so like, dang, when is the next time I'm really going to find me a man who's going to treat me like him and then eliminate the bad and replace the bad with the good. So it's like, you just you just don't see something like that happening so it took me a while to realize like my ex showed me that yes i can have the type of love that i've always wanted and yes now we know to add this that and that and that factor into the equation so yeah like i finally got what i wanted and it's like man I gotta let it go but eventually i'm like no like he was your lesson as far as in yeah you can find a man to love you the way you want to love and to treat you the way um you want to be treated like 100 percent my ex i give him his props he most definitely has set the bar high for the next man period and i have no problem with that because that's what you want you want your ex to step the bar up high if each ex ain't stepping the bar up high then you need to look in the mirror because literally 
every ex of mine. My first ex, literally, once I realized he was in the slow class, no disrespect to anybody who is not a great learner, but once I saw that, I was like, oh no, because his cousin, his family let me know in general, like, if you think education is a big word, then what is it actually, like, what are you going to think when I actually give you a big word that you're like, what the fuck is that? So, um, in so many words, I'm like, yeah, there's no future. Like, I can't have an intelligent future with this man. So then the next step, I get an intelligent man. And then th this man, he's the one who shows me, like, I can get the man who's going to be honest and... For the most part, truthful. Like, the one thing about my second boyfriend is he is the one who got me into, like, I can have a man that I can be very truthful and honest with. Like, if you doing your dirt, bitch, let me the fuck know so I can decide on to do. And that's something that's carried on into that next relationship where that next relationship is that one to show me, like, I can have the kind of love that most of us girls want. There are men out there, there are boys, there are young men, there are, like, it is fucking out there. So, that's what that is. <laughs> um, and then, leading into that, because this is something I want, I like, this is what I'm waiting to do for my next man. I love to fucking cook. Like, the one thing that I'm taking from my last relationship into my next relationship is I love to cook and I enjoy cooking exactly what my man wants to eat for dinner like I'm a picky eater I barely know what I want to eat most of the time men really know what they want to eat and even if it's not something that I want to eat if it's not something gun ho he wants to eat but I thought of something else in the midst of he telling me something to eat I can make that or I'll figure out a way to make us both our meal because I know I may not eat this, but I had no problem cooking this for my man and cooking this separate for myself because at the end of the day, it's probably the only difference is going to be in me. The sides and all that's going to be the same, but the me in who cooks longer and so forth, so forth would be the whole thing. So I do like to cook and that is something that I want to bring into my next relationship because that is like... That's a key essential ingredient to a relationship. Like, it shows um, partnership. It shows, um, it just shows, like, the love dynamic. Because, like, I cook the food, I make the plates, I serve the plates. My man will literally know my plates in the kitchen, go get my plate set up my plate <laughs> and be like hurry up come on let's go eat like he's like okay everybody's everybody got their food now it's time for you to eat and that's something that I when I said like set the bar high that is one of the things that he set the bar high with is you can't like that right there is genuine love when your man literally your man lets you deliver <laughs> Your man literally let you deliver his plate. And if he see your plate ain't there, get up and go get your plate. Like, you can't make that up. So, I'm spoiled like that. And I'm okay with that. <laughs> so, I finish the hardest part of it all. The rest of the shit is not even going to be on right. Oh, that's what them things is for. Okay. So... I'm glad I had the camera out because for the life of me, I can't figure out how to put this back. So this ends up not even needed. <sighs> and then now I got to go get this other part that ain't going to be all right. But I don't think I can put it on without that part. So, yeah, I can't put it on without that part. So I got to go get that real quick. Okay, so I don't know how well this bag going to stay, but yeah, it is what it is right now at this point. So let's continue. We almost done. We have half the list full. The, 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 the bed is basically done. So yeah, let's finish this list so we can go sleep, sleep. <laughs> but um, I'm a big reader. 
which honestly throughout my house alone that says that um music literally i love music i listen to music from the moment i wake up to the moment i go sleep so music is a big thing of my life um eventually i want to do like a cd collection favorite songs from old cds type of thing i want to do something with all my old music especially before i put it on the wall like we got to figure something else <laughs> um making wigs i really do enjoy making wigs coloring wigs like literally wigs 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 i love it so um one thing i've always said in in my head and never really out loud is even if i don't make a successful as a cosmetologist i'm gonna be successful with wigs like there's no if ands or buts about that so yeah um let's see let's see I love um doing lookbooks and stuff like that like the fashion shows and stuff like that like that is something that I've always 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 gravitated to when I used to draw a lot as a child in middle school I was always drawing mannequins and then drawing them with different outfits I even I don't even know where it's at but I think I showed it on the vlog one time but I even had a whole outfit drawn out had clippings from um like a clothing uh, magazine of like the print I want and the styles I want like I've always been into fashion now do I want my own fashion line that is something that I question myself about but as far as me just getting fashion doing fashion stuff like that has always been something that I've always loved I always wanted to do I've always had visions of just photo shoots that I want to do and just creatively what I want to do with these photo shoots and creatively what I want to do with wigs so yes fashion 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 is really something that I really enjoy doing and it's not even on a like business tip just on a personal tip like I just want to do it for myself type of thing so like me making sure my hair my clothes and all of that like that is just something that makes me happy and it's always made me happy like i chose my career because i want to be able to dress the way that i want to dress and not have to be so corporate all the freaking time so yeah i have seven tattoos which that's really not a lot but we don't know what the future holds because I do want to do a snake vine, but all of it is going to be kind of hidden and it's all just going to tie in together in a sense. Um, my favorite color is black, 100% and rose gold. Um, I don't like to say pink. I've always fought that I love pink, so rose gold. <laughs> you can put the read between the lines about that. Um... My in, my biggest insecurities is my hair and my body. Now, my body, I ain't even gonna lie. Like, my body is where I'm actually happy with my body. Like, this morning, well, honestly, every morning, I look at my body. And this morning, I looked at my body and I'm like, bitch. Bitch. Bitch, night, bitch. Like I looked in the mirror this morning and I finally saw a body that I liked, and we love that energy because that means that we're doing something right when it comes to this food thing that's so hard right now. <laughs> um, and believe it or not, my um fitness journey is like over 10 years like i started my fitness journey yeah it is 10 years wow um i started my fitness journey in 2011 it was right after my relationship i didn't join the gym because of my last relationship i joined the gym because i needed something to do and i knew that that would be a positive reinforcement to help get over the relationship so i 100 percent my fitness journey gym wise has been 10 years but my health journey has been a long time like i was young um i saw a picture i was like oh hell no and like cold turkey i just started cutting 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 
substitute and substitute and then I just had it down to basics I stopped eating out um I was eating out a lot and I completely that I cut cold turkey and it was easy it really was easy for me to cut off eating fast food so much cold turkey and like even now I barely eat fast food like in a month we gonna say in a month I may eat out out maybe four times probably <laughs> once a week probably and in that week I may eat out maybe one other time it just depends on like how lazy I'm really am being and like what I really have a taste for so normally when I really don't have a taste for something and I'm just like I need something I just want a burger or some shit like that or like Wendy's or um I try not to go to McDonald's I really do every now and then they give me but I haven't had McDonald's in a long 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 time because the McDonald's is not good for you like the fact that it don't go oh yeah that don't that's never sat right with me and then even after I eat McDonald's the mucus instantly I get it so eating McDonald's for me is well, not eating McDonald's for me is easy. So, like, Whataburger used to be my thingy. Every blue moon, I may eat Whataburger. And even when I do eat out at these places, the food's really not that tantalizing to me that much. But in the moment, yeah, it serves its purpose. So, this fitness journey has been over 10 years strong. So, anybody wants, like, a realistic number, like, yeah, it takes years. But 100%, it takes years to like really morph and be what you want your body to be how you vision your body to be because it's all up in here like most of that shit is mental and once you eliminate the mental like this morning I was able to look in the mirror and be like bitch yes like I was looking at my stomach and I was like, bitch, do you see some abs trying to come in? And we ain't even been doing much ab workout as it is. Like, I never wanted abs, but to see some definition in that area, like, bitch, we not even trying for that, but okay. <laughs> so, yes, um, I have OCD. That's something that I most definitely um ain't got no shame in my game saying i have ocd um i am a germaphobe um working in a grocery store most definitely intensified my germaphobia and i'm okay with that because i am very self-conscious of not being psychotic about it so yeah <laughs> and honestly working in a grocery store it also helps me implement more cleaning processes for my home. Not even be cleaner, but also so I can clean I can clean less and get more done in a short amount of time. That's a win-win for me. I have ADHD. I discovered I had ADHD um during COVID. It was just like out there. Out there. And it's like the more it was out there, the more I was like, hmm, hmm, hmm. Hmm. And so during COVID, I realized I had ADHD. And during COVID, when I realized I had ADHD, that's when I stopped giving a fuck. Because I realized that the quirks that I am, the like, I can't help it. Like, the fact that I'm so blunt and honest and I don't know how to be fake, I can't help it. Like, the one thing I've always known in my whole journey of life is I can't fake the funk. And I knew that that would be hard for me. But now that I have a legitimate reason on why I can't fake the funk, I totally don't care. And um, that's really been um, realizing that my ADHD is why I cannot, can't allow myself to be fake. It allowed to open up a different, like side of me of I need to stop caring that you know this 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 and this I never cared so much but now that I had like an answer to a question that I didn't even know was a question it helped open the floodgates for me to be like you know what if everybody else type of shit so 
I have ADHD and I don't want to be on medicine because I don't want to deal with the medicine thingy. I feel like I am very good with self-controlling it for now. Um, and I feel like because I stopped my ADHD, I mean, I stopped my OCD from being so crazy. I feel like that has helped me with my ADHD in the long run. So got to thank MTV True Life for that because that generally changed my life when it came down to my OCD. And I probably would have been even more crazier person than what I am now. So, yeah. 